Thank you, Kim. Okay, here's what God wants to accomplish. He wants to make himself known to the countries of the world. He wants to make himself known to Israel in particular. He wants his grace and mercy to go back to them for the seven-year period of time. What God wants most from people is relationship, a love relationship. The first commandment, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. That's what God wants. And Jesus took the other commandments and, and, and summed them up in two. Love God, love others. That's what God wants. He wants relationship. When he went and he destroyed all those nations, when Joshua, when, they, when he took them out of Israel, when he took, uh, we took Israel out of, out of Egypt, and Joshua went destroying the other nations, all the nations they destroyed all had one thing in common, and that is they worshipped other gods. So God wants a relationship with you. That's the most important thing to him. All right? And in this way, he's going to make himself known to every country at this period of time before the dispensation of grace ends. Kim, please continue. Verse 9. Then those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and bucklers, the bows and arrows, and the javelins and spears, and they will make fires with them for seven years. Okay, seven years. That seven-year period of time is the exact same period of time. If we go back here to our, our map of the, of the time frame here, you'll see that this war is right in here, and that seven years, when you, they start picking up, when they start picking up the weapons, coincides exactly with Daniel's seventieth week. It also coincides exactly with the time that the Bible tells us the Antichrist is going to sign the covenant with Israel for exactly seven years. Now, the purpose of this is so that Israel will constantly be reminded of what God has done. And you think a war like this, well, people just couldn't forget it. Well, people have very short memories. Remember what happened when God took them out of Egypt. There were 10 miracles that he did in Egypt. And when, he, they, when they got out and they were at the Red Sea, did they go to Moses and say, Moses, I, we can't wait to see what God's going to do next? No. They said, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? They had forgot about God's miracles and his miraculous power. So as a result, this is a constant reminder to the, to the people of Israel what God had done for them. Continue, Kim. Verses 10 and 11. They will not take wood from the field, nor cut down any from the forests, because they will make fires with the weapons, and they will plunder those who plundered them, and pillage those who pillaged them, says the Lord God. It will come to pass in that day that I will give Gog a burial place there in Israel, the valley of those who pass by east of the sea, and it will obstruct travelers, because there they will bury Gog and all his multitude. Therefore, they will call it the Valley of Hamangog. Thank you. Now, it's very interesting. I saw a technology show where they were talking about the, the Russians using some sort of new wood that's like petrified almost for its tanks. It's actually harder than steel. So it's ironic that the Bible would talk about them, the weapons being wood. Of course, the rifles are mostly still made of wood. So... It's interesting that they came up with a technology that has a wood that they're able to make and somehow uh, process it in a way that it's actually better to use than steel. So that's very interesting. Kim, please continue. Verses 12 through 16. For seven months the house of Israel will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. Indeed, all the people of the land will be burying and they will gain renown for it on the day that I am glorified, says the Lord God. They will set apart men regularly employed with the help of a search party to pass through the land and bury those bodies remaining on the ground in order to cleanse the land. At the end of seven months, they will make a search. The search party will pass through the land, and when anyone sees a man's bones, he shall set up a marker by it till the barriers have buried it in the valley of Hamangog. The name of the city will also be Hamona. Thus they will cleanse the land. Think about this. Seven months burying the dead. Think about the vast number of people that, must, that, that are going to be dead on Israel for it to take seven months 
and to employ people regularly. They're going to be going out and hiring thousands of people probably to bury all these people. And they're still not going to get everybody. Continue, Kim. Verses 17 through 20. And as for you, son of man, thus says the Lord God, speak to every sort of bird and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather together from all sides to my sacrificial mill, which I am sacrificing for you, a great sacrificial mill on the mountains of Israel, that you may eat flesh and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty, drink the blood of princes of the earth, of rams and lambs, of goats and bulls, all of them fatlings of Bashan. Ye shall eat fat till you are full, and drink blood till you are drunk at my sacrificial meal, which I am sacrificing for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and riders, with mighty men, and with all the men of war, says the Lord God. Thank you, Kim. Now it seems like after they're burying for seven months, there's still going to be so many people left out there that it's going to take the animals to come out and, and finish eating them and devouring them to get through it. Now, this scripture verse is sometimes confused with Revelation 19.8, which I'm going, to, I'm going to read to you. In Revelation 19.8, you see something very similar, where the Lord summons the animals to come and to eat the dead bones. And here's what it says, um, 19.18, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the, cap the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And then it goes on to say this, And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. Now, we'll see as we go on in Ezekiel that that's a totally different event that did not happen in Ezekiel. So it's God sending the animals to eat the flesh, but at two different periods of time. The, the book of Ezekiel never talks about the Antichrist, never talks about the false prophet, never talks about Christ coming to rule and reign. Instead, it talks about him making his spirit known unto Israel for this seven-year period of time, as we see on the map, known as Daniel's 70th week. Kim, please continue. Verses 21 and 22. I will set my glory among the nations. All the nations shall see my judgments, which I have executed and my hand which I have laid on them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord, their God, from that day forward. Okay, so the purpose here of these nations coming into, coming into Israel is for God to make himself known to the nations, that he is in fact God, and more importantly, to the nation of Israel for this period of time known as Daniel's 70th week. Because remember, the Antichrist is going to be trying to say that he is God during this period of time. So God wants to make sure that he trumps him, so to speak. Okay, Kim, continue. Verse 23. The Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they were unfaithful to me. Therefore I hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies, and they fell by the sword. All right. God is showing, God is showing the Gentile nations what happened to Israel because of their unfaithfulness to him. That's his point. Now he's also going to also show them that his mercy and grace is going to go back to Israel for this last seven years, again known as Daniel's 70th week. Okay, very important. Continue, Kim. 